starts off with the gear icon where you can import a vendor list. When you click on vendors, it will prompt you to ask you, is the first time importing vendors? From here, you can upload your Excel file or your Google Sheet. Um, note that there is a sample file. This is what it looks like. And these are the different fields we have. So the, um, the name field is, is mandatory. You have to have a name field. And often that might be an individual name, first and last name, and it also could be a company name. So there are scenarios when you're trying to import just list customers like Starbucks or you know the big names out there. You, you might not have individual first and last names. So there's a little bit of tweaking to deal with it. And I'm going to share with you a couple of uh, options of actually importing companies and importing independent contractors that have first and last names and have social securities that we need to track for 1099 purposes. So these are our fields again. Okay, they're not required. The only one that's required is the name. It is possible that the name and the company could be the same. So let me go ahead and share with you how to create a demo. All right, I've just clicked on the gear icon, select import data, and that's going to take me to the vendor button to select. From here, I can either download the sample file, use that, or I can work with my own spreadsheet by clicking browse. I can then go about navigating to open this up here. Once I've done that, I click next, and I'm going to have the ability to map the data. So what you would do here is you would look at the available QuickBooks fields on the left to your spreadsheet fields on the right. QuickBooks is going to try to automatically match. Be careful here. You want to look at your available options that you see. And in my case, I'm going to map the vendor twice because it is the company name. And all I have is company data, like Starbucks, you know, for example, would be a vendor. And since we have to have the name field, I'm going to have it twice. I just double check to verify everything else looks good. And then I hit next. Here, I see which ones are going to come in. I've got 40. So if I realize I don't want one, I can uncheck it. Other than that, I am good to go as far as name, company. If I notice I'm missing an email, I can enter it here. I can also, if I notice that I want to change maybe the, the name here, I could. So imagine I did have a contact person at uh, one of these places here, like L and M. Imagine I I did have John Doe was the the sales rep. I could enter John Doe, and that will go into the first and last name of the vendor field name, and then it will use L and M as the company name here. So other than that, uh, looks good. I have the import and then once I import the vendors that's it's in there so I'll do that and then I'll go right to my list here I'll see my vendor list I can open up one of these vendors here like Dell Inc I can see how it comes in here now let me show you notice that you, you will have some issues if you don't truly have first and last names and the company has two or more words. You are going to see things like this. Not really a big deal unless you are really going to send out purchase orders and bills to these vendors. Then you are going to need to go in here, clean that up afterwards. Um, there just is not a, an option to not bring in first and last name, but just the company name. You have to bring in a name. So notice that. You can always change this around to what you want, but the first and last name. So in my case, if I was really particular, I would just delete those, leave it as such there. And I think that's fine to work with there. All right, let me jump right into the bank feeds real quick here. And so if I had the, it's going to automatically populate based on looking at the detail and that that's really nice so for my insurance here i can do that i love that i love that um 
So let's imagine I come here and add HP, but instead, I, for whatever reason, I just add HP and it populates HP as a new vendor. If I hit save, it's going to automatically just put HP as the, the name. If I needed to add details, then I could open up the details and see the full list there. So in this case, I'm totally fine with just HP, saving it just as such and adding it like that. All right, um, so cool. Let's talk about how to import contractors now. So I have uh, some vendors that are contractors and I want to import their social security numbers and so forth from their W-9 and maybe later attach the W-9 here. Let me share with you how that process would work. So I would click the gear icon, import data, vendors. I'd, I always recommend you create a separate spreadsheet to do this. I'm gonna pull that in right now, looking at browsing to find it. Here it is. I have a separate spreadsheet, just contains their uh, first and last names. And so down here is tax ID. I do have a field tax ID, so that's important that I have. And then I go next. I can double check to see these three vendors here. You can see I've got fake social security numbers and a fake EIN here. And that's going to be how I want to do it there. Then once it's been imported, it's super important. You look those people up right afterwards. And then you click edit and you, you have to track payments for 1099. That will not get checked for you. So notice first, last display name as good, good stuff there. So I would now go to the other person, other Smith, Eve, edit, track. You'd want to have that so it's capturing, assuming you're using QuickBooks to send out your 1099s. Yep. And for the last one, our Max, if he was a if he was a uh, S corporation, I don't need to track payments for that. I might put in the notes is S corp, and then I would uh, attach. The W-9 here for the signed W-9 that has the official, you know, tax ID and all that, all that stuff right here. So that's how to work with vendors and manage that. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.